A very good evening to all of you and welcome to the national news broadcast on Channel Live. We are ready to bring you the top stories from home and around the world. I'm Natalia Virvardhan. And I am Tilina Uderatna. Coming up are your top stories for tonight. The President says people's representatives should commit towards the betterment of the public in the use of organic fertilizer amidst challenges. Minister Mahindananda says that the government is not ready to import organic fertilizer. The Prime Minister says that the motherland will transform into an agile work site. The COVID-19 immunization program commences in 12 other districts. An environmental report has been called for the Central Expressways plan. Massive COVID-19 testing conducted in Guangdong province in China. And on the top story for tonight, President Gotabe Rajapaksha says that the representatives of the people should move forward to implement the decision to use organic fertilizer as it is beneficial to the people despite the challenges posed during the transition period. The President made these remarks during a meeting held at the Chairman of the District Development Committees at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday. The Vistas of Prosperity and Splendor National Policy Framework affirms that in order to produce a healthy and a productive citizenry, the government must ensure the right of the people to access a non-toxic and balanced diet. To achieve this objective, the government has taken measures to ensure that only organic fertilizer would be used in the agriculture sector in the country in the future. President Rajapaksha emphasized that the program should be implemented for the benefit of future generations, notwithstanding criticisms from some sections of the society. Despite attempts to create a shortage, sufficient fertilizer has been imported until next season. Therefore, all cultivation activities can be carried out without any hindrance, the President said. The move towards organic agriculture is not a sudden decision by the government. The government's position on this was clearly set out in the Visitors of Prosperity and Splendor policy statement as well as in the last budget. But the failure to apprise farmers in this regard has led to create an undue fear among farmers. There is great potential in Sri Lanka for organic fertilizer agriculture. The President also stated that it is the policy of the government to provide maximum relief to the farmers to manage the difficult situations they face during the transition period. Due to the inclination of the farmer to use chemical fertilizers for several decades, it has resulted in an increase in the number of people living with non-communicable diseases. Minister Douglas Devananda, Secretary to the President P. B. Jai Sundara and a group of ministry secretaries were also present at the occasion. Minister Mahindananda Gamage says that the government is not ready for the importation of organic fertilizer under any circumstances. The Ministry of Agriculture has made preparations to only import liquid nitrogen if necessary. Delivering a special statement in the parliament today, Minister Mahindananda Aludgamage said that this historical program will be initiated with the aim to provide toxic-free food for every human being living in this country. Minister Mahindananda Aludgamage said that approximately 400,000 metric tons of chemical fertilizer was imported into the country in the year 2017 and as a result of the misuse of chemical fertilizer being the main reason for this. The quantities of chemical fertilizer used in the country up to this year have been calculated. Accordingly, 1.2 million metric tons have been utilized, which is a 300% increase compared to previous years. However, the country's production has not improved accordingly. The government expects to provide the necessary technology and 30,000 rupees worth allowance for farmers with less than one hectare of land to produce necessary quantities of fertilizer for their agricultural activities. He rejected the reports which had alleged over a potential importation of organic fertilizer and said that the government has no intention to import organic fertilizer under any circumstances. He further said that the government will take necessary measures to provide adequate quantities of organic fertilizer for the country's agricultural production. Compensations will be made in case of a shortage in the agricultural production in the country. 
Government Medical Officers Association says that their support has been rendered for the government's organic fertilizer policy. The country began to use chemical fertilizer in agricultural activities in 1960s. In the past, it was reiterated that the agriculture sector should be uplifted with the use of chemical fertilizer in order to maintain sufficient storage to avoid a food shortage. Doctors have pointed out that a tendency of an increase in non-communicable diseases in the country was seen with the use of chemical fertilizer. Chairman of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Anuruddha Padinia, while addressing a media briefing held in Colombo today, said that many harmful consequences can occur with the use of non-organic fertilizer. Chairman of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Anuruddha Padinia, said that the farmers who were engaged in chemical agriculture and their family members are enduring plight of succumbing to renal diseases as well as other non-communicable diseases. He said that 500 COVID-related deaths occurred in the country last year, while 5,000 members of agrarian families died from the renal disease. He further said that it has been proven that the birds too die due to the adverse impacts of the chemical fertilizer use. He said that the general public continue to contract various non-communicable diseases, including cancer, due to the regular consumption of food produced using chemical pesticides and herbicides. He said that approximately 50 cancer patients die on a daily basis in the country. He further added that the public in the country use surface water for their daily activities. However, he said that the water in existing canals and rivers have been polluted due to the mixing of chemical components used in cultivation in catchment areas while continuing to affect the general public. In his opinion, toxic-free food production in the country should be developed into 100%. He said that the country has the capacity to produce necessary quantities of organic fertilizer required for cultivation in the country. He said that chemical agriculture is a large-scale mafia which had been in motion for a considerable time period. He further said that necessary steps should be taken to rally agricultural authorities to produce relevant quantities of fertilizer on commercial basis. He added that the food security should be assured through a secured food policy. <laughs> Government Medical Officers Association has indicated that their program, which had been in effect for the last 15 years, have become successful at present. Chairman of the Government Medical Officers Association, Dr. Anwar Dapadini, said that through food security, immunity in people can be further improved, which would reduce non-communicable diseases. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa says that all necessary measures have been taken to transform the motherland into an active work site amidst the challenges faced by the country. The Prime Minister has pointed out that an economic revival will arise with the development projects that are in place, including the 100,000 km road network, water supply for all and the construction of new expressways. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa made these remarks while addressing the inauguration of the second day of the Sri Lanka Investment Forum 2021. Our next speaker, under whose leadership Sri Lanka experienced tremendous growth and who initiated many of the flagship projects that now bear fruition, is none other than the Honourable Mahinda Rajapaksa, Prime Minister of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. We are delighted to welcome the Honourable Mahinda Rajapaksha. I won. Tanta khatiye na mein bharaaru tatwe te digi ni digi te ma. Moona demi. Apar rata nevata kadi sir vadami ma baat baat karan. Apar denga washai. Apni dhanat mat marga kilometer lakshya. Samate jale nava adivegi mar. Idi kiri mani rata pura khat ma ke karan devant vyakruti hara arthik mein pibidi ma pati karge ne ano. Chanta vatra nevata mudal parihara ne karvi mahara vyapari kati tu gorda angono. Vyapar pahasuing karge ne ma pidi sa avashyak ya mar gadiat karge ne ano. Hambantu vara ya ashit karmi kalape tuli nava karma. औषधिकलाधिक 
आयोजकी नव बाधु निदास किरी मूल्य सा मूल्य नवन दीर गया नहीं यार आज ये अब यहाँ माधुर नाधुर ना क्या तरह में नव पोर्ट सिटी नागरे आधे नाम कोटे के ना इलाका और दो पहाड़ तुलना दी अपर आटा तुलना टा आवाम वाशिंग अमेरिकान डॉलर बिलियन पाल वाक बाबन आयोजना आकर्षण कर रहे नहीं मटे आप इधर एक काटी दुगर रहे नहीं आम ये हर आप कोई दो संगत मध्य हुआ द अपर आटे हरोम लक्ष्य सनितो आंत कर रही मटे आप अट हैकियों ने ताई आप विश्वास कर लो नव पाना त्याग दे एक अकाउंट वकील से लोग सेवा वा नायोजन है लबा गए नहीं मटे है क्यों नहीं सा अब बलापुरुत्वान ने लोके में यह लपेले आयोजक यान अपराटर पीवी से नेट दीरी मत की नहीं माई मित्रों ने वर्तमान ये दी नायकन ना आवेनु अटे नाये नोवन विदेश विनी में गलाए अभी इलाक गली � यात्र वसंगते माध्य हुआ द कोलब कोटा स्वेलन द पुले मैता कालीन फिया कारित्य गैन सातुत्य यह कि मित्रों ने बहुत गलिकांशी आयोजकींट उन्नदुवक देख भी यह कि निश्चित आयोजन आवास्ता गाना आवाज गैन माध्य अंडर माध्य इस तरह का ये वाइन बहु में आयोजन सामुल हो तुला इसमें तो केरना बावत ஐயோஜனாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவாவ
and difficulties to access medical and other necessities. Fifthly, achieving the population immunity through vaccination, which is the accepted best mean of defense against the virus. And finally, maintaining and progressing the economy and livelihood during the post-pandemic. Talking about the way forward, I would like to highlight two aspects. First, what makes Sri Lanka special in this pandemic situation? And second, what lies ahead of us in the post-pandemic transition period? As I said earlier, first we understand that Sri Lanka is located in a blessed an important position in the world map, making it a centralized, focused and strategic land piece in the Indian Ocean. Second, we understand the entire world is disturbed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the world is eyeing for new strategic businesses, industrial and service partners to ensure the resilience of the economy, taking lessons from COVID-19 pandemic. If we superimpose the strategic location of Sri Lanka, it is possible to identify the opportunities that can reap mutual benefits to Sri Lanka and partners around the world. I believe Sri Lanka is a unique and land of opportunities for economic partnerships as of today. Thus, what lies ahead of us in time to come is the building of fruitful and mutually benefiting relationships with commercial partners around the globe. As I said before, I wish to re-emphasize that Sri Lanka is a land of opportunities and invite this forum to improve connectivity, trusted cooperation and strategic economic partnerships reaping mutual benefits. Meanwhile, vaccination in another 12 districts and the inoculation of the second dose of the Sinopharm vaccine were commenced today under the COVID-19 immunization program. So far, more than 2.3 million people have received the COVID-19 vaccination in the country. Accordingly, the inoculation program commenced. In Anuradhapura, Polonnaruwa, Badulla, Monaragala, Hambantota, Nuwarelia, Matale, Putlam, Kegal, Batiklo, Ampara and Trincomalee districts respectively. The COVID-19 immunization program in the country was initiated on 29th January. Subsequently, the inoculation program outside the Western Province was commenced on 26th May from Kurunagala district. The inoculation program was initiated in Gaul and Mathara districts on 27th May, while the program was commenced in Kandy, Ratnapura and Jaffna districts on 30th May. The inoculation of the Sinopharm vaccine for the people in Mathala district was initiated today. One of the vaccination centers was established at St. Thomas's College in Mathale. The residents in Mathale Vihara Para Division received the vaccination today. Minister Janaka Bandara Tenakon visited the centers to observe the vaccination process and the state employees in the region expected to receive the vaccines tomorrow while pregnant mothers are expected to receive the vaccine on the 10th. Meanwhile, the vaccination in Polonnaro district commenced today. Accordingly, the priority of the vaccination program has been given to high-risk Ramaniladari divisions in Taman Kadua and Higuragoda Medical Officer of Health Divisions. 1,100 people received the Sinopharm vaccine at the centre established at the Maitri Palasiri Senior Primary School in Taman Kadua Medical Health Officers Division. The vaccination in Batikalo district was initiated today. The district director on divisional health services mentioned that the general public, employees of the district and divisional secretariats and police officers attached to the district received the vaccines today. The program was held at the Batikalo Winston Girls High School. The inoculation program in Hambatra district was conducted today. Accordingly, the vaccination was carried out in 30 centres in the district with one of the centres established at Tissa Maharama Rajamaha Viharaya. COVID-19 immunization program for the Anuradhapura district was also commenced today. The program was conducted in four centers in the district. The vaccination in Badulla district was also initiated today with the inoculation program conducted at the Ridipana Elders' Home. 
Meanwhile, the priority will be given for the people residing in high-risk areas in Medical Officer of Health Divisions tomorrow. The COVID-19 vaccination in Ampara district was conducted successfully today. The program held at the DS Sinanaika National School and Kavanthisa School in Ampara was organized by Ampara Divisional Health Office. Accordingly, frontline state employees received the vaccine today. The COVID-19 immunization in Putlam district was also initiated today. Accordingly, the first dose of the vaccines will be administered to the people in high-risk areas in the district. A program was initiated in Dankotur and Vennapur Medical Officer of Health Divisions. State Minister Arundika Fernando was present at the vaccination program conducted at Dankotur Hal Dandwani Roman Catholic School. The vaccination program in Kegol district was commenced today. Accordingly, the vaccine have been administered to elderly public above 60 years of age residing in the region on the first day of the program. The vaccination commenced in the 10 Medical Officer of Health Divisions in Trikumali district today. The administration of the second dose of Sinopharm vaccine was commenced today. The inauguration program was carried out at the Jintupitiya St. Paul's Welfare Centre for Children in Colombo. A total of 2,336,026 have received the doses of vaccines under the COVID-19 immunization program thus far. The first dose of the COVID Shield vaccine has been administered to 925,242 persons. The second dose of the COVID Shield vaccine has been administered to a total of 353,789 persons. The first dose of the Sinopharm vaccine has been administered to 989,574 persons thus far. A total of 64,986 persons have received the first dose of the Sputnik V vaccine so far. Another flight carrying 1 million doses of Sinopharm vaccine expected to arrive in the country tomorrow morning, according to State Minister Professor Channa Jayasumana. Well, on the same note, a temporary provisions bill over several details related to COVID-19 was presented to the Parliament today. The relevant bill was presented to the Parliament by Minister Ali Sabri and Secretary-General to the Parliament, Dammika Dasanayaka, read out the draft bill. Minister Ali Sabri said that the temporary provision bill related to COVID-19 incidents from 2019 has been presented to the Parliament accordingly. Meanwhile, a total of 1,028 persons have been taken into custody during the last 24 hours for violating health guidelines. Many operations are underway to monitor the implementation of travel restrictions in the country. Stickers were pasted on vehicles which entered into the limits of Colombo today as well. According to the police, a total of 78,022 vehicles have entered into the city limits from 6.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. yesterday morning. The relevant pensions for this month are expected to be provided on the 10th of this month. Accordingly, steps have been taken by the Triforces and the police to provide necessary transport facilities for pension recipients to the banks. Army Commander Shavendra Silva said that the support of the Grama Seva officers and divisional secretaries has been obtained in this regard. Meanwhile, Dr. Deepal Pereira of Lady Ridgeway Hospital for Children encouraged parents not to hesitate in bringing children to the hospital if they suffer from fever for more than three days. 2,123 COVID-19 patients were detected in the country today. Meanwhile, 2,214 patients left hospitals today following recovery. Total recoveries in the country has increased up to 178,259 and 30,054 COVID-19 patients are still receiving treatment in hospitals. The Director General of Health Services has confirmed 47 related COVID-19 deaths from the 17th of last month to the 6th of this month. Accordingly, the total number of deaths has increased to 1,789. The National Eye Hospital has taken steps to deliver relevant medicine for patients who are being treated in clinics of the hospital through postal services. Patients who are expecting to deliver medicine through the postal service should take steps to contact the relevant specialist doctor via the allocated number and provide the clinic file number, address and telephone number. Another program has been initiated by the Colombo National Hospital to deliver medicine for patients who are currently being treated in clinics of hospitals. Accordingly, the hospital has introduced several telephone numbers in this regard. 
The Deputy Director of Public Health Services at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Hemant Herat, says that the oxygen demand in country has been increased as the number of cases are growing gradually due to the prevailing COVID-19 situation in the country. However, he further said that the current situation in the country is being monitored well while appropriate measures are being under consideration. With regard to the oxygen demand, there has been reports that oxygen demand has been increased by many folds and that is again there are obvious reasons for that. Firstly, the number of cases have increased and proportionately the number of people who require oxygen therapy has increased. And the other important thing is that one observation was that the percentage of people who are going into critical state has relatively gone up and that may be the reason why we need more oxygen. The third important factor is we are more and more closely monitoring in an objective manner the oxygen requirement of the people using the equipment used for this uh, to measure the uh, oxygen requirement in an objective manner. As a result, we have been able to uh, provide the oxygen therapy early to those people who require the oxygen therapy. So as a result, a longer duration of oxygen therapy is carried out in many peoples. And as a result also, the oxygen requirement has increased, but the exact level of increase or the demand, there is a risk of spreading the disease among the populations or communities who have undergone or who are affected by the recent floods and the other adverse weather conditions. The, some of them have been evacuated to safe locations and some are uh, spending their in, uh, safe locations of their own, probably in their relatives' houses and other places. So there is a possibility of mixing people among these communities and as a result, the possibility of spreading the disease among these people has become relatively high. And as a result, we have already instructed the district and provincial authorities and the regional epidemiologists to take this into consideration and to take appropriate measures to ensure that there will be no undue or unwanted or excessive spread of disease because of these adverse weather conditions and people are affected by such adverse weather conditions. Coming back to the island, Director General of Samurthi Development Department, Bandula Tilakasiri says that the program to distribute 5,000 rupees worth relief allowances for Samurthi beneficiaries has reached its final phase. He mentioned that the allowance has been distributed among approximately 1.45 million beneficiaries thus far. Financial provisions worth more than 7,200 million rupees were allocated in this regard. Director General of Samurthi Development Department, Bandula Tilakasiri, said that many other entities are eligible to receive the 5,000 rupee allowance. He said that instructions have been directed to distribute the 5,000 rupee allowance among elders, disabled persons, patients with chronic diseases, including renal disease, and those who receive the agrarian and fisheries pensions. He further added that the government has allocated necessary financial provisions to distribute the relevant allowance among these entities before the 10th of this month. The 5,000 rupee allowance was distributed among the Samurthi recipients in Yatadola Gram Niladari Division belonging to Matugama Division Secretariat Division in Kalutra District yesterday. A total of 3,233 families reside in 57 divisions in the relevant Division Secretariat Division. A total of 12,511 beneficiaries have gained eligibility to receive the 5,000 rupee allowance in Katuana Division Secretary Division in Hambantata. A sum of 60.5 million rupees was allocated in this regard. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa emphasizes on the importance of directing attention on the protection of marine environment in Sri Lanka. The Marine Environment Protection Authority was established in 2008. The Prime Minister said that the ability to access the existing legal frameworks related to the marine environment was enabled with the establishment of this authority. 
Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa made these remarks while releasing a congratulatory statement to mark the World Ocean Day. 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with ocean. The statement has further indicated that it is saddened to observe the existing ecosystems which directly contribute towards the existence of the species have been polluted due to human activity. Merchant and other shipping networks and related accidents have directly impacted on marine pollution. The Prime Minister has mentioned that in his belief, the damage caused to the ocean with the ship accident that occurred recently in the Colombo coastal region cannot be estimated in terms of compensation. The step taken to establish the Ocean University showcases his interest on this subject and a timely effort taken towards the future. Minister Dr. Kehliya Rambukwela says that legal action will be taken against ownerless social media accounts that deliberately share posts detrimental towards national unity. Speaking at the media briefing held today to announce the cabinet decisions, the minister said that a cabinet paper in this regard has also been tabled. Minister Dr. Kehli Rambukwela said that according to calculations in the presented cabinet paper, approximately 17% of the social media accounts are ownerless but use various methodologies to share contents with deliberate means which are detrimental towards national unity. Accordingly, he said that necessary measures against such activities should be taken considering such circumstances and conditions. He said that countries including India and Australia, which doubt over democracy, have also taken steps to prepare draft bills of such nature. He added that certain limitations should be imposed in this regard, as those who share legitimate content in social media platforms have also been affected due to these issues. He said that the relevant cabinet paper has been presented as a joint cabinet paper together with the Ministry of Justice. Mrs. Deepa Leonage has been appointed as the new secretary to the State Ministry of Skills Development, Vocational Education, Research and Innovation. She received an appointment letter from the secretary to the president, P.B. Jayasundara, at the presidential secretariat today. Mrs. Deepa Leonage is a special grade officer of the Sri Lanka Administrative Service. And in the meantime, Minister Johnston Fernando has instructed to present an environmental assessment report over the construction of the Central Expressway within two days following a reassessment. The minister directed these instructions after taking part in a discussion held today to probe the allegations made on the inundation of the Gampa district due to the expressway. Various entities have alleged that the Gampaha area has faced a flooding situation unlike the past following the recently prevailing weather condition with the construction of the Central Expressway. Accordingly, a discussion was held to probe in this regard with the participation of Ministers Johnston Fernando and Prasanna Ranatunga and State Minister Nimal Lanza at the Ministry of Highways today. The Ministry Secretary was instructed to present an environmental assessment report after reassessing the Central Expressway's plan. A joint committee was appointed to probe into the causes related to the flood situation that occurred in the district. The committee will be headed by the Gampa District Secretary and the other members of the committee comprise of officers attached to the Irrigation Department and Highways Department. Meanwhile, a total of 18 deaths have occurred due to the adverse impacts of the prevailing weather condition. According to the Disaster Management Center, 207,882 people belonging to 52,695 families in 87 divisional secretariat divisions in 10 districts have been affected from the prevailing adverse weather condition. Meanwhile, the National Building Research Organization has continued to enforce red notices to landslide warnings for four districts, which includes Kalutura, Kegol, Nurelia and Ratnapura. And from the world of cricket on sports news, the Sri Lanka squad scheduled to take part in the One Day International and T20 series against England, set to lead the country tomorrow morning. The team will be captained by Kusal Janit Pereira. The squad approved by Minister Namal Rajapaksha for the England tour was announced today. The squad consists of 24 players. Accordingly, Sri Lanka will play three T20 matches as well as three One Day International matches against England. The first T20 match is scheduled to take place at Cardiff on 23rd June. The series will conclude on 4th of July with the third One Day International match. 
All the matches of Sri Lanka's tour to England will live telecast on Channel I. Well, that brings an end for today's morning news bulletin. Make sure to join us once again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, thanks for watching. Have a great night. Good night and stay safe.